Welcome back to the Coach Steve Show podcast where we talk sports, movies, any hot topics in any type of sport, major league college, anything like that. Welcome back to the Coach Steve Show podcast for all returning listeners, all all tens of you, but I appreciate anybody out there that listens. Welcome back. Uh, before we dive into today's episode, make sure you check out Belly Up Media Network. If you go to bellyupsports.com and check out all the podcast blogs, um, anything out there for anybody that got media for everybody, go check them out. Uh, they're doing some great stuff over there. So it's bellyupsports.com, but it's the Belly Media Network. So go check out all the great workers with blog writing and podcasts and anything like that. And make sure football coaches, uh, if you're still looking for drills during your spring ball, go, we're almost into summer, so you guys should have a lot of your stuff finalized, everything going in. Uh, you need some drills. Coach Stone has everything for you. If you go to CoachStoneFootball.com and click on his Back to the Basics football drill manuals, he's got books out there for everything, and he never stops. He's continuing to add more and more and more. So go to CoachStoneFootball.com and check out uh, his Back to the Basics books and drills. You will never have to look up another drill again, I promise you. So over the weekend, we had our Kentucky Derby races, and, of course, everybody saw that it was a comeback. You had, you know, 80 to 1 odds, I believe, and some people won a lot of money betting on that. I um, heard somebody bet, you know, personally, and they won four grand, so that's just great. But one of the biggest surprises was for some people, and I don't know why uh, this was even brought up, or he's getting hate for this, but Coach Leach. Now, everybody loves Coach Mike Leach. I don't, there's some people that may not like him, but at the end of the day, you know, I feel like people like him. I Everybody knows he's probably outside of, you know, I love Coach Bielman now at Illinois, but one that I really follow is Coach Nick Saban. And so outside of that, I believe people would sit there and say um, that Coach Leach would be my, um, probably my favorite, probably my favorite um, football coach. And yes, I, or Mike Leach, love Mike Leach. Um, but he had an interesting take. Um, he put out a tweet um, that talked about the college football playoff. Um, we're going to see if we can show it. It is not working, so we're going to talk about it. Why is it not working? Who knows? But Coach Leach, and I'm sure everybody saw the tweet. Now, he's getting a lot of backlash from this tweet. Um, now, again, why he's getting the hate for this tweet, we will talk about. Um, but he had a tweet out there talking about the college football playoff. Um, his tweet said that horse winning the Kentucky Derby today is a good example of why an expanded college football playoff is needed. That horse hadn't won all the races leading up, but it got its chance, and that's what happened. He tweeted that after um, the Kentucky Derby. Now, when I first read this, didn't think too much of it. I read it, and I go, oh, that's cool. You know, I get what he's saying. I see what he's saying. Um, pretty cool. And, you know, I completely understand. He's talking about people getting chances in the playoff, and that's what it's all about. Um, you know, outside of that, that's really all to me it looked like. I didn't see anything wrong with it. I didn't think anything of it. Um, but, you know, that is what it is. But some people took it to the extreme talking about coach leach and that he really shouldn't be around talking about college football i guess um you know he took a little bit of heat um anybody watching the video i'm sorry i'm still messing around with trying to see if we can get it which we cannot which is fine technology is great this is a great radio um so i'm gonna read the tweet again and so let you guys think at home. You've all seen it, but let's just talk about it. That horse winning the Kentucky Derby today is a good example of why an expanded college football playoff is needed. That horse hadn't won all the races leading up, but it got its chance, and that's what happened. So I'm going to tell you what I thought he was going by this. When he says 
that horse hadn't won all the races leading up, but a guy's chance. That's what happened. And why he's talking about an expanded college football playoff. Well, let's talk about the college football playoff. Why not? Let's, you know, off season for college football. Why not continue to talk about how the college football playoff is set up and what could happen and what could be different. Back in the day, people before the college football playoff, it was done by computers, if you all remember. It was, you know, your strength of schedule was put in a computer. If you were ranked one or two at the end of the year, you're going to the playoff. Or you're going to the championship. Everybody else is going to the bowl game. And bowl games were sacred. Bowl games meant something, and we talk about it. Before, we've talked about it before. And then it got to a point, which we're going to talk about how it got to that point. I think it was already heading in this direction, but we'll talk about a specific person as to maybe why it got accelerated. But the playoff, you know, got pushed, and they said, okay, we'll have four. And it just adds into the another game that a team may potentially want to play and said this is going to open up to having more teams in. It's going to be fair because they were talking about regular seasons. Regular seasons in college football are amazing. I love regular season college football more than NFL. Um, I love regular season college basketball over the NBA. College sports are just better than the pros. I love the NFL more than the NBA. But if I compare the two, college football is amazing. It has way better games. Um, it has more upsets. It has different offenses, different defenses, different things going on. It's it's just fantastic. But what he was talking about here is, okay, we have our four teams. But then it kind of turns into a similar situation and where, well, you lose a game back in the day. It's very hard that you make a one or two seed. You have a decent chance but it's still tough you lose two games and it's done this college football playoff this four team kind of turned into that where when you lose a game almost your whole playoff goes out the window then as it goes on it you know okay maybe you lose the game you still have an opportunity you still have a chance especially if you win your conference and you're a power five then it turns out you lose two games well now you're out of it now you gotta play a bowl game you're outside of it there's there's nothing strength of schedule still comes into play that's why people are really pushing for Cincinnati. Well, they were undefeated, but if you look at the strength schedule, it wasn't as high as everybody else's. But that's why they were pushing um, for that. So Coach Leach has been on record talking about the college football playoff before and said if it's going to be expanded, what he would think about doing is 60. Now, I don't know if 60 is the right thing, but he's not about 60 because he compares it to Texas high school football and other high school football stuff, because he said, you know, okay, who has playoffs? Well, high schools do. Youth leagues have it. Um, Division three has it. Division two, uh, you know, just pretty much every level has this extended college football playoff besides them, besides the top dogs. He said even in the NFL, they have, you know, this really expanded playoff. So he's talked about before, and I'm paraphrasing, but he talked about wanting to add even more teams to get more teams involved. I don't know if we should go 60. You know, I've talked about it before. If you're going to expand the college football playoff, I think you need to go between 8. I think you need to either go 8, 12, or 25. And then the one seed get to buy. And the reason why I say I've always said 25 is because I think back in the day, top 25 meant something. And as this has gone on, the less and less it means something. It does. But in the grand scheme, if you really, really, really want it to mean something to give a lot more teams some hope and battle, 25 could be that spot. But that's you're going to have to alter the regular season. I think 8 to 12 is the sweet spot where you can justify the regular season. You don't really have to alter it as much or anything like that. And it gives some, some more teams some hope. There's still a lot of teams out there that won't have the hope, but it gives more teams hope. Now, the backlash that he is getting from this is some people out there saying, well, why are you comparing the college football playoff to a horse race? And then I think what part of this tweet that people are kind of going after is that horse hadn't won a lot of race, had not, hadn't won all the races leading up. So they're comparing that to regular seasons and saying, well, you're saying that they're not, if you don't win the regular season, you still get to go to the college football playoff. Is that why you want 60? And so people literally took this tweet and just analyzed it and really took it to the extreme. So they're saying, oh, you're talking about, you know, this is this. And some say he shouldn't be around the college football expansion. Well, Mike Leach is one of the smartest people in college football. Realize he's really, really, really smart. Now he's going to say what he wants, 
I think he really meant in this tweet, but what I think he really meant by he hadn't won all the races up to that moment was, yeah, maybe they don't win the regular season. And then one year they do really, really well and they win enough and get in there. You know, that's what he's probably mean by this horse. Like, well, yeah, he competes. Maybe he had one and, and this and that. I think what he really was trying to say was, if you expand the college football playoff, you're going to get a team or two in there that maybe can have an upset, that maybe are going to do this. Um, this is not a horrible take. This is just a Mike Leachism. Mike Leachism, I believe, if I can make that up. Listening to Coach Leach, this is what you get. He's going to say what he wants. He's going to say it in his way. He talks and walks to the beat of his own drum. And that's what we just have. That's just what it is. So one thing in this world is we see this tweet and we've taken it to the extreme. There is nothing wrong with his tweet. You really have to sit there and think about what he was saying and how he meant it. But people took it to the extreme and now he's getting a lot of backlash. Which does he care? No, not really. He really doesn't care about any of the backlash that he gets for that tweet. What he meant was if you expand the college football playoff, you will get other teams. So, for example, if it was eight and Cincinnati got in and they didn't play Alabama the first round, maybe they win a college football playoff game and move on. Like, now is it realistically that they would go beat Alabama or beat so and so? No, probably not. But it gives a little bit of hope. Now, his whole thing about 60, I don't know, because let's talk about the college football playoff. And we've talked about before, so let's do it again. First of all, there's other things going on why they're not doing this. The more you read about it, the more realistically it looks that teams could break away from the NCAA, not be a part of the academic side, and worry about paying their own way, branding the university, branding their team, and getting away from that. That's the type of conversations they're having. I hope they're having conversations how to fix this um, name, image, and likeness that is going is running rampant right now, and it is going to get worse. And I hope that they're talking about the transfer portal. Those are the things that they're talking about. Now they're dragging their feet. They're doing it really slow. We can all have this fixed by now. But the transfer portal is called football playoff mix is not working well. And what I mean by this is these top, top-tier guys could go to a place and, you know, maybe do really well at the school, but this school, you could tell, is not going to make it to a top four for this college football playoff. Now they have film on themselves. Another team out there might look like they need you to help them. You'll enter the transfer portal. They'll give you, and if they give you a scholarship or somebody pays you to go in there and you go to this team that can make a college football playoff, so it becomes free agency. So the transfer portal is running wild. The name, image, likeness is going to run wild. And this college football playoff expansion is on the table. And the fact that football player football teams could break away if they figure it out to get away from that academic side and scholarship side and just pay everything, brand their name, name, image, likeness, that money. Everything is going out of control. And NCAA and the college playoff committee and everything else cannot control this. The TV executives who control everything are not controlling this. So this tweet is the last thing that you should worry about. Now, college football expansion. If you expand the playoff, here's the problem. People really treasure the regular season. So another thing that we have to think about is when you expand the college football playoff, once you get to a certain point, you are going to have to sacrifice the regular season, which we all love and cherish and look forward to. We get, you know, 12 to 13 weeks of regular season football. Then we get championships, then we get bowl games, then we get college football playoff. It is fantastic. You Once you get around the 8 or 12 range, you really maybe don't have to alter it. You start going above that. You have to scale it back. If you look at FCS, they play 9 to 10 regular season games, if that, I believe, and then they get to their 64 um, or whatever it is, playoff um, time. All these teams. And then they travel to the other team's location, which I'm a fan of. I'm a fan of expanding the college football playoff, and they have to travel to the top seed location. Because could you imagine if you do get that underdog story, um, whether it's Cincinnati or a Coastal Carolina, if you went top 12 in Coastal Carolina, made it to number you know, whatever, and another time Power 5 had slipped, 
could you imagine like a Michigan traveling to Coastal Carolina? What that does for Coastal Carolina it allows, you know, these, you know, these, these, these teams that people don't talk about enough, and they're not Power Fives, they're not this or not that, and get something like that. That's why I was a fan of the top twenty-five. But when you get to that, we are going to have to scale back the regular season because you're asking a lot. Because football is a collision sport, you're asking an awful lot of these guys that have played football probably in youth, high school, and then they play in college to say, okay, you're going to play 12 regular season games if you make the college football playoff, and we have 60-some teams or whatever it is, 25 teams even, and you win, you have the possibility of playing a lot of games. Like right now, if you look like an Alabama, if you know they play their 12 regular season games, if they play you know, in the – SEC championship game right there is 13. Then they play their their uh, college football playoff game. Well, that's 14. And then they get to if they win that, then they go there. There's 15. That's just two. So you're talking about playing more games than NFL. So right now, the reason why this talk about it, you're going to have to scale back the regular season. You're to that point. If you expand it at even eight to 12 is adding more. Now, what the argument's going to be is well, there's no guarantee that you're going to play that many games. But what if you do? Clemson's shown it time and time again that they're going to they can get there and play a lot of games. Alabama's done it. You have teams that have proven to do this. So you would have to scale the regular season back between eight to ten games. And but then it's not fair to all the other big time division one programs. Oh, I only I can only play nine games. Because at some point you're going to realize you ain't going. And so you're going to punish them by not letting them do that. Then it takes away revenue because the more games you play, the more you're on TV. Uh, I know ticket sales aren't as big like the NFL, but you get ticket sales, you get sponsorships, you get these TV deals that these conferences want. So when you scale those games back, they're losing money. So there's a lot of things that are going on. And then another thing to think about, I want it expanded but I'm going to play devil's advocate with it. You expand it to eight. Are we eventually going to have the same argument of, well, it's the same, you know, eight teams. It's the same 10 teams that are getting to this top eight or 12. We need to expand it. Mike Leach is talking about going to 60 some, which is great, but he also understands you'd have to scale back the regular season. So the fact that people are going after Mike Leach for this tweet, the people thinking that he doesn't know what he's talking about, he knows exactly what he's talking about. He's looking at this. Think about, I'll talk about Illinois high school for a second. I know Texas is probably, you know, Texas is king and everything else. In Illinois, you get nine regular season games. And they go by their strength of schedule and playoff points for the playoffs. If you go five and four, you are you could be in, but you could be out. It depends on who you beat and who you've beaten. What have they done? And who you've lost to, what have they done? You lose to a team that went 1-8, and eight, that doesn't help you. You beat three teams that go 0-9, and nine, that doesn't help you. So 5-4, and four, you can be bumped out. You go 6-3, and three, you're in. You go 7-2, and two, you're in. 8-1, and 9-0. and oh. All those do is just kind of tell you if you're going to get a home playoff game or not. If you're 9-0, oh, you get a home playoff game, most likely. Um, pretty sure. And then 8-1, and one, you might. 7-2, and two, you could still travel. It just all depends on your class and everything else. In Illinois, if you get to the state championship game, that's your 13th game. So you got a few rounds of the playoffs. 13 games is a lot for a high school kid. I think that's what Mike Leach is thinking about where, you know, in Illinois you get 256, I believe. So 256 teams make the playoff, but they're all classes. You got 1A through 8A. So in college football, you could scale the regular season back to nine games and then do divisions, you know, and in high school, they do classes. And in college football, you could do divisions. Well, kind of like in college basketball, and maybe that's what he's thinking about. Well, we've got, you know, the Northwest Division, we've got the Southern Division, we got this. And if you do something, you get sent there and play. So, it, and you could expand it to sixty teams, but you're still going to run into if you keep winning, maybe you're going to play only fifteen games. But it's about money. But I'm sure they could figure the money out. But when money's involved. And you talk about changing money, and the, when you change the money, maybe it's going to go down. They ain't going to do it. Nobody does that. Think about it, even your own self. Do you do stuff for free? No. Does somebody come up to you and say, hey, you know, we're going to change your job a little bit, change your job title, but that comes with different pay, but you're going to get paid a dollar less. Nah, I'm not going to do it. Don't even do it. I'm going to quit and go somewhere else. Like Those are the type of things that happen. So Mike Leach is not far off, but people don't want to sacrifice a regular season for this. 
I want expanded college football playoff as well. I would love to see a March Madness style playoff. But in football, that is very difficult to pull off. Very difficult. You cannot ask them to play 18 games. Can't do it. We would have to scale the regular season back. There is a way to do it. There is a way to get this done. There are multiple ways. Eight teams, 12 teams, 16 teams, 25 teams. Go 60. Play eight or nine regular season games. Have six regions or whatever it is. And you could have this happen. You can mo most definitely get this done. But to go after Mike Leach for talking about you know, an underdog horse that he's trying to compare it to college football, it's okay. It's okay that he compared to that. You're just looking at the part where he says, oh, he hasn't won that many races. And I understand we don't want a 6-6 six and six team making the college football playoff. You want, you know, win. So if you go to nine games, does 5-4 and four get there? Probably not. You probably have to go 6-3. and three. Seven and two go to strength schedule for this region. There are ways to do this, but Mike Leach is on to something. He's smart. People realize that he is smart. And if he was going to be on the college football playoff committee, I would that would be great because he's smart. So we need to not hate Mike Leach on this college football take. It's not the worst thing there ever was. We do need to expand it. There is a way to do it. But the transfer portal is running wild. NIL is going to be running wild. And the Teams are going to break away from the subway. It's very, very possible. Before we go into the final part of the podcast, you football coaches out there, you know, again, we're getting to we're in your spring ball, so maybe you're already hitting. Some of us that don't do spring ball, we're going to get into the summer where we're going to get helmets on, we're start hitting. You got to start thinking ahead, and you got to think about the big guys in the trenches. They hit every single play, which is why it's the best position in football. Being a defensive lineman, offensive lineman, psh, forget about it. We're the best looking. It's phenomenal. We're the best. But they hit every single play. Think about it. They're doing one-on-ones or hitting. They're doing um, one-on-ones underneath the shoot. They're hitting. They're you know doing inside run. They're hitting. Your own team, they're hitting. And then they're playing Friday night. That's a lot of hitting. Well, there's a way to protect those shells and reduce our pet of lows, those size, take each and every week, and it's Guardian Caps. Guardian Caps helps reduce it by 20 to 33%, which is huge. It's the cover over the helmet, and it protects the helmet. Why wouldn't you want to do that? But it's mainly to protect the players. Actually, it's really protect the players. But protecting the helmet is just icing on the cake. So if you go to guardiansports.com slash guardian dash caps and use the code 15 off all one word, it's going to save you 50% off your order. Um, you can get different colors. You can buy a huge bulk. You can buy one. You can buy one. Maybe you already have some. You only need to buy one more. Maybe you need to replace some. I don't know. So I know fundraising and money is everything. So that's why if you use that code 15 off, you're going to save 50% off your order, which is huge, which is huge. So I'm here to save you money. Again, guardiansports.com slash guardian dash caps. Use the code 15 off to save 50% off your order. Go save the money. Go protect those shells. It is worn by over five NFL teams and 200 plus colleges like Oklahoma, Alabama, Penn State, Georgia. If it's good enough for them, it's good enough for you. Go get that for your big guys. And to continue to help out your players, do you ever think about helping your kicker? And believe it or not, it's probably your T. If you've got a young kicker, struggling kicker, it is probably your T, believe it or not. Don't stop using the old school orange ones. You don't need it no more. Who needs that? You need launch pad kickoff T, which is strategically designed to help kick the ball deeper into the end zone. It strategically helps you to get squib kicks and outside kicks. It comes with a pamphlet manual to help tell you how to lay the football on it on the T for its flaps to help you get strategic options. For that, I didn't. I never knew that, but now and now you probably didn't either. But now you do. So if you go to launchpadkickofftcom slash CSS and use the code CSS at checkout, it's going to save you ten percent off when you buy the tea. And then if you buy the four pack, you're going to really only pay for three of them and get the fourth one free. As long as you go to launchpadkickofftcom slash CSS and use the code CSS at checkout. Thank you, Launchpad Kickoff Tea. So there was an interesting thing posted on Twitter before, and I want to talk about it. Coach Saban, I am a big fan of, as you well know. 
wanted to talk about this quick stat and talk about maybe why there's a college football playoff because of this man. Did you know there has been more SEC coaches than losses at Alabama since Nick Saban got there in 2007? At Alabama right now, Nick Saban is 183 wins and 25 losses. That's a lot of wins and not a lot of losses. Because think about it. He was a head coach at Toledo. He went 9-2. and two. He's a head coach at Michigan State. He went 34-24. and 24. So in five years, he lost 24 games. But in 15 years at Alabama, he's only lost 25. Then when he was head coach at LSU, he lost 48. So he has 200. Uh, he has 183 wins and 25 um, losses. Overall, he is 274 and 67. By his time at Alabama and SEC, he is 25. Now, I didn't quite update this, and I apologize. When this article was written, there's been a just a handful of different head coaches. This is in 2021, so there's been a handful of different ones. But there's been a lot of changes. On January 3rd, so here's the article. January 3rd should be a statewide holiday in Alabama, especially in Lee County. It's on that day in 2007, Coach Nick Saban accepted an offer to become the Tide's 27th head football coach. In 2021, which I haven't updated to 2022, and that's on me. I apologize. It's his 15th. It was his 15th season. In that at that time, 50 coaches have come and gone at all the 13 SEC schools. Now they were hiring um, in Tennessee, so it'd be 51. Um, this number does not include interim coaches, who which probably adds another half dozen or so. Um, so after Tennessee hired um, Coach Lightbull, it'd be 51. And then I believe there's been a couple other changes here. But 50 to 51 different ones. That's a lot to have 50 to 52, let's just say, different head coaches in the SEC since 2007. And Coach Saban has only had 25 losses. That is insane. And if you think about it, people have really tried – to push Nick Saban either out or they tried to change things to help think about it. You know, in 2007, he gets that they go seven and six His next year. They go 12 and two. Um, they don't get to the national championship game. They lose to Alabama. Then 2009, they go 14 and 0. They beat team Tebow um, and win the national championship, not in the national championship game, but they beat him in the SEC championship game. He goes 14 and 0 and just goes on this run, you know, 14 and 0, 10 and 3, 12 and 1, 13 and 1, 11 and 2. 12 and 2, 14 and 1, 14 and 1, 13 and 1, 14 and 1, 11 and 2, 13 and 0, 13 and 2. Like it just it goes on and on and on. Like it just never stops. And think about it. I believe there was nine or ten different national champions in the old way before Nick Saban got to Alabama. And then he won a national championship in 2009, uh, 2011, and 2012. Um, and then they start to get, you know, then he doesn't win. Then they get the college football playoff going on. Um, then he wins the championship in 2015. Then he wins in 2017. Then he wins in 2020. But he's been there a lot. He got there in 2016. He got there in 2018. And then he got there this year in 2021 season into 2022. Okay, so think about all the things that have happened while Nick Saban's been the head coach at Alabama. One, you got a lot of different head coaches in the SEC. Two, remember the defenses he had back in the early, you know, 2008, 9, 10, how big they were, how dominant they were. He's getting NFL talent pumped in left and right. And people thought it was unfair on his, um, on his um, defense. Um, and how they're running the football and everything else. How are you going to combat a Nick Saban defense in college? Well, RPO started to become big, right? RPOs were always a big thing, but they started to realize, hey, how do we beat an Alabama defense? Well, let's go no huddle up tempo. And even to this day, there are times where that kind of gives them problems, but it gives a lot of people problems. 
Okay, Nick Saban, as godly as he is, as being a head football coach, probably the best head college football coach of all time. Yeah, you're still gonna he's still gonna get beat. He has 25 losses. You're never not gonna beat him. Um, you know, Auburn's beat him a couple of times. He's been beating the national championship a couple of times. Um, you had a couple of times in regular season, a team will get them. Um, and he, and that's just what happens. You're never not always going to win, but RPO started to become big three yards down the field for all offensive linemen, which sometimes seems unfair to defenses. Now as an offensive guy, absolutely love it. Uh, the no huddle up tempo stuff on um, the RPO thing was huge. Like I've said, on um, the involvement of the quick game stuff, the involvement of getting the air raid stuff into this um, world, um, out formationing people, how they block and everything else. And he even said, and it's quoted, is this the route we want college football to go? Now, when he says that, he's not complaining, and some said he's complaining this and that, and they're probably thinking, oh, man, we got him. We got him. We're changing college football. We can combat this defense. We're going to get him. Well, kind of like with the NAIL, where he's basically saying, you thought I could recruit before, Wait till we get some NAIL stuff going on. Wait till this transfer portal thing. Like, if this is what college football is going to go to, you wait and see. Well, back then with that stuff, guess what he did? He adapted. He always wanted to run the football. He always wanted to have fullbacks. He always wanted to be kind of understand an eye formation. He wanted to get downhill. Well, guess what? With When he started to do that, he said, we got to get a guy in here that could do that. And Lane Kiffin comes in and really opens his eyes um, to how this could work. So he does it. He's like, hey, you guys are going to do it to me. I'm going to do it to you right back. Well, then... They're, they're competing to get to championships and winning. And I think a college football playoff was imminent anyway, but they said, well, let's just get a college football playoff because maybe there's a chance that Alabama doesn't win. And then it became Clemson. Well, we can't have Clemson winning all the time. We need other teams in there winning, which you've gotten different teams in the playoff. Well, that didn't slow him down. He said, okay, we're out of this college football playoff. I'm going to adjust my process a little bit. We're going to adjust what we do. Um, we got to play longer seasons. We're going to adapt and do speed-based training. We're going to get different um, strength and conditioning guys in here because people have come and gone. So he wants his guys to be able to play fast. He wants them to be able to, um, you know, be durable. And then he realized, well, I don't necessarily have to have these huge, huge, huge guys. They just have to be quick. And that's why he did that. All right. Well, guys got, got the college football playoff. He's there almost every year. I believe there's only been one time since it happened that he has not been there. Um, and that would have been 2019, I believe when they, you know, yeah, they beat Michigan in the citrus bowl, which kind of, you know, whatever, beat Michigan is nothing to them. Well, he got through that, right? Well, then let's do NAIL. Well, NAIL and the transfer portal and everything else, we can get guys to go to these schools and pay guys to go everywhere. And like I said, I don't believe Coach Saban said this, but it was like, hey, you thought I was good at recruiting before. Well, wait till this happens. And is this the route you want college football to go? Okay, this is where it's going to go. And he proved that already because he can recruit. Still sent guys in NFL. And he's getting good recruits now. Even Texas A&M, who had the number one, Recruiting class this year, he's still right there. He's still got the talent. And losing last year in the national championship game, the way they lost to Georgia, and he lost to two coaches last year, um, uh, former coaches of his, that's awakened the sleeping giant. I think if he would have gone undefeated or won the national championship, he might be retired. So Nick Saban has changed college football. He's had a huge impact on college football. And the things that they try to push to change, he has adapted. And that's what makes him one of the greatest. That's why you hear about Dabo Sweeney, who I'd still love to talk to, but articles talking about, oh, he doesn't do the transfer portal and everything else. He will start to eventually look into that because he even said to beat Alabama, we got recruit like Alabama, and they did. They had SEC, and they still do have SEC-type players where you could pick up Clemson, put them in the SEC, and they still compete. You know, especially, you know, when they were winning those last championships, they had huge guys that fast, and Nick Saban's adapted. So... I wanted to talk about that because to see more SEC, because he's doing something right. You're getting way all these coaches in the SEC, and he just sticks around and has this process and has done everything. He's this godly like figure in college football, and everything they've thrown at him to get him out of there, uh, you know, make him change things. Oh, we got him because of their defense or offense. Okay, I'll play your game, and I'm going to do it better than you. So. You want to do the RPO game? I'm going to do it better than you. Oh, you have to have a fast defense? Well, I'm going to do it better than you. Oh, you got to recruit and have this NAIL stuff uh, and this transfer portal? I'm going to do it better than you. That's what he is. That's what he does. And that's why Alabama, one of the best programs we've seen in a long time, and that's why Coach Saban's the best college football coach of all time. Um, but 
wanted to talk about Nick Saban. That I thought that was just crazy. So I wanted to talk about that for a second. Um, thank you guys for uh, so much for watching and or listening. Uh, make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button on the Coach Steve Show YouTube channel. Um, go check out. I'm going to try to more update the Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash the Coach Steve Show. Um, if you're listening to the podcast in the audio form, please leave it a review on Apple and leave it a, some type of star review, whatever you feel is appropriate. If you do that for me, uh, greatly appreciate it. Um, go check out all the other episodes. If you're on YouTube, click on the playlists, especially if you're into Marvel stuff or stuff on there. So thank you guys for watching and listening. This is Coach Steve. This has been another episode of the Coach Steve Show podcast. We will see you on the next episode.